All right, if you have your Bibles, open up to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. If you don't, just listen. Second Thessalonians and chapter 2. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, and our gathering together to Him, that you don't be quickly shaken from your peace or disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Imagine if they had the internet back then. Paul would be saying, don't listen to this one, this one, this one, this one. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come until the falling away comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or the object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things, and you know, you, now, you know what restrains him now, so that in time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. The Bible says that before the end of the age, there will be a great apostasy, a great falling away. We can have no doubt that we are in that day now. The signs of this great apostasy are all around us and they're unprecedented. In 2023, I, you know, what I often do on this night is I kind of I look back. We look back one last time to see what is prophetically significant about what happened this year. And that's what we're going to do. But I'm beginning speaking of apostasy. In 2023, apostasy did not stop. It did not pause. It didn't take a break. There is a connection between the shocking developments in our culture that we see almost every day and what is happening or not happening in the houses of God, in the houses of worship. The one leads to the other. The Lord said if the salt loses its saltiness or the light loses its radiance, it'll affect everything else. In America and the West, the falling away from biblical faith and values have continued rapidly this year. COVID and the lockdowns had seen many people stay home from attending houses of worship. Most churches were hit very hard. We've been blessed. We've actually been growing by God's grace. But the overall direction of our culture has been that of falling away. And it was happening even before COVID. But COVID accelerated it. On the other hand, what is being disseminated most and first is nominal Christianity. Or lukewarm Christianity which points to the fact in the end times it won't just be a time of darkness, but darkness on one hand, light on the other. The grays are disappearing. And the result is that when you take the grays out, you've got black and white. You've got radical evil and radical good. With the mainstream American culture, the movement has been to radical evil. This year, one of the most celebrated songs in our culture was called Unholy. On the Grammys, it featured the singer of the song, identified as an LGBT man singing the song dressed up as Satan, while his co-singer, a transsexual, transgender, sang inside a cage surrounded by demons. Apostasy. Satan had a good year in 2023. <laughs> Displays of him were set up in American capitals in places that had never been before to counter Christmas displays. One article said that Satan was the hottest thing in American culture this year. This year, National Geographic reported a giant surge in the occult and pagan religions, witchcraft. And do you know what one of the biggest promoters of these things are? Paganism, witchcraft, the occult? TikTok. TikTok is aimed at your children. And TikTok, that's the next generation. So when you look at what the Bible says about the end times, it's not surprising anymore when you see what's happening to the children. How will the end time scenario of Revelation come about? This way. And by the way, TikTok is owned by China. Right. Communist China. They ultimately control it. And so they actually, and actually they limit what Chinese children can do on the web. They limit their time because they know it's bad for them. But they pump all sorts of stuff to the children of America and the West. 
This year, the number of youth identifying as transgender exploded. Why? Was it natural? No. It's the result of a continuous barrage of indoctrination that our culture is doing to our children. And one of the sources, again, of that indoctrination happens to also be TikTok. All over TikTok, you'll see, you'll see invitations for children to enter into this. This year, the number of high school students identifying not as heterosexual but LGBT reached 25%. One out of every four. That's double what it just was just a few years ago. It is, it is like 25 times higher than the generation that's called that the, before the baby boomer. That was like 1%, then 2%. Well, it's, not, it's happening and it's not natural. It would never happen by itself. It's happening because there is something going on. It's not just within America. The civilization that was founded to glorify God and spread His Word. You know, it's been, we have now been labeled as the number one country in the world pushing extreme gender ideology on the rest of the world. America, sex change surgeries of youth, America is pushing it on the world. This year, the Biden administration, and of course, I'm not going to get political, but the Biden administration declared that exporting LGBT ideology would be a key priority for American foreign policy. Not, not what we grew up with, not, hey, freedom, it's about freedom, liberation, it's now exporting this. Foreign policy. Many of you grew up in a world where America represented Christian values. It said, that's what was said as opposed to godless Russia, godless Soviet Union, which represented godlessness, it was godless. You would never have thought that one day America would represent the spreading of anti-Christian culture and Russia would view America as godless and anti-Christian in its values. Today, nations throughout the world are seeing America as immoral, a force they have to shield themselves from and their children. Now this year there were growing signs of a pushback against the woke agenda, against the indoctrination. Several states enacted laws against that indoctrination in school like Florida and the media and Hollywood attacked it as extremism and hate. The laws basically said basically this, do not, we are not for indoctrinating our grade school children up to the third grade, it wasn't even after that, into woke ideology, alternate sexuality, transgenderism. We, don't, we are not going to allow that. And they were right to do that. In fact, no, it shouldn't be anywhere. Indoctrinating children into that? Something that would have been unheard of in times past. And then there's Disney. Disney. We grew up family, friendly, children, entertainment. It has increasingly taken as its mission, this is an end time phenomenon, because we never would have imagined this years ago, to, and this is its own words, this is not my words, into queering the American children. This year Disney collapsed. Its earnings plummeted, its movies failed, its woke and gender altering movies overwhelmingly collapsed. And yet it responded to the failure by planning more woke Alternate sexuality, child grooming on television and the movies, even with a pushback. If you don't save the children, you're not going to save the culture. You're not going to stop this if the children are not touched. The corporations, the corporate world, networks, media are feeding our children. That has not stopped. From children's entertainment, Nickelodeon, Disney, TikTok, public school system, only in the past few years, the public school system are requiring across America, more and more, you may not realize it's happening, they're requiring all the children to choose what gender pronoun they want to use. Not just in California or New York or New Jersey, but this year it's happening in, I found it when I was traveling America, in Ohio, a conservative state like Ohio they're doing it. In the Bible Belt they're doing it. In Kentucky, I was there. They're doing the same thing. The children are all being indoctrinated. And it's happening in states that are conservative. And if it keeps happening, those states will not be conservative because they're going to grow up. In 2023, the principle of evil is good, so good is evil, continue to advance. The Bible says in Isaiah, woe to those who call evil good 
and good evil. First, they say, it says evil good. Second, good is evil. And that's how it goes. First, any society that says evil, sin, is now good, will end up saying that what is good is now evil. The biblical law. And so there are seeds of persecution being spread throughout the West and America. In 2023, the United States government, Justice Department, waged war against those it considered dangerous. Pro-life activists, pro-life demonstrators. They raided houses, filed uh, uh, lawsuits, sought to put pro-life people in prison even for up to 10 years. Even old ladies who protested abortion. It's happened in America. It's happening in the West. This year in Finland, a pastor's wife and former member of parliament was put on trial by the government a second time along with a pastor. Why? Because many years ago she posted a Bible verse that upheld biblical values regarding the ideology of altered gender. She faced years in prison for putting up a Bible verse. Not in Russia, not in China, in the West. Now thank God the government lost again. But that was their second attempt. The very fact that it could even come up is a warning sign of where it's going. And in a Western nation, which just a few years ago would have said we're a Christian nation. A Christian charity worker in Europe this year spoke on television in Europe how he was saved out of the LGBT lifestyle by the power of God. This year he was put on trial for saying that. Facing imprisonment. In the United Kingdom, Christians were arrested for praying silently. Silently. They were saying, are you praying? If you're praying, we arrest you. This year, California, another foreign nation, passed a law saying that if a parent does not go along with their child's confusion over gender, a confusion undoubtedly created by the culture, not the children, the state can and will remove the child from the parents. This year, the Biden administration sought to ban Christian parents from becoming foster parents or Christian couples by requiring that all adoptive parents for foster care, they have to embrace gender ideology or they're not fit to be parents. In Massachusetts, I believe a Christian couple was banned from adopting a child because they were Christian. This year, the United Nations, that great institution, yes. that revered institution that's near us, began moving in the direction of a policy that would seek to force all nations to adopt the LGBT agenda. And that this agenda, they said, has to subjugate religious rights. I told you this year, one out of every four American high school students now consider themselves LGBT. The number of high school students who consider themselves to be true Christians is nothing compared to that. So you want to see what the picture of the future is going to be for America? Unless there's a revival or a change or a turn, it's going to be that. It's going to be a godless nation without revival if we don't have that. Here's another statistic like that. This year it came out that the number of teenage American girls that have contemplated killing themselves is one out of three. One out of three. Another thing that's happening to the youth, I don't know if you read about it, but is mental illness is an epidemic among our youth now. It all goes together. When you take God away from life, you take away life. It leads to death. Speaking of which, Canada, to the further, and there are probably people watching from Canada, further this year expanded government-assisted killing program. They've killed about 10,000 Canadians every year now. Expanding it, killing them, euthanasia, assisted killing. But now they've they tried to move it, they may have moved it to the mentally ill. We can kill them. That means I would think without their consent. And even killing children, they're seeking to expand it to killing children. And what you probably don't even realize is that killing, assisted killing, euthanasia is already happening in America. It's legal in 10 states or jurisdictions right now, including New Jersey. This year it was reported about seven more states are joining in. It's spreading across the country similar to the way abortion spread. It's by state by state until something happens. Moving to the place where the government can decide who can be killed. 
And it's pushing to against their will. It's getting to that. It's pushing the edges of that now. That's the end times. This year, the left sought to expand abortion even to the point of birth, babies being killed at their birth, or they can be let die once they're out of the womb. They can be let die. That's called infanticide. The last time that was legal was the Roman Empire, was paganism. Well, we're, that's where it's going. While conservative states sought to enact laws banning the killing of children, so there's a war going on in America. One poll found that Americans are overwhelmingly abandoning values traditionally associated with America, like free speech. You look at, the, you look at what the youth say or what the younger generation statistics on free speech, they're not for free speech. They say you can cancel it. They, in, in the, the youth of England said that if there's something in the Bible basically we don't agree with, you can ban the Bible. That's the future. America is becoming something other than America. The Bible speaks of an un end time culture of unnaturalness. This year there were several stories in which scientists were able to create new life without male and female in animals. To create a baby from just a female or create eggs without a mother. In one experiment, scientists created a human embryo this year from a human stem cell. They let it live and then they killed it. I wrote in The Return of the Gods that one of the biblical principles is that without God, man ends up worshiping the works of his hands. The Bible says they worshiped idols. They made idols and then they served, they worshiped the works of their hands. When the Apostle Paul stood on Mars Hill, he, he spoke of the idols and he used a word to describe what they did and he used the word techne, from which we get technology. We get tech from that same word. What it means is that without God, we'll end up worshiping, serving our own technology, being led by our technology, being addicted to our technology. This year, where it was the year of artificial intelligence taking center stage through chat, GBT, and others. There's a race among corporations to make artificial intelligence smarter and smarter and smarter. What's different about this technology is when, when you look at most technologies, man uses the technology for something he wants. Artificial intelligence takes over the thinking part. And the more it takes over the thinking, the more it can lead and the more it can actually take over. And so even scientists who help create it are now warning, this is like the atom bomb right now. These things can take over. This year has laid the groundwork for the coming year in which there will be a presidential election. Over 90 charges were brought up against the leading Republican candidate, who I think you know, called Donald Trump. He was just removed from the ballot in Colorado, then in Maine, a case that will ultimately be judged by the Supreme Court, yet right now he'd be favored to become the president, which raises the possibility he could, be, he could win the presidency from jail. That has never happened. <laughs> but even that, you see a tearing apart of America because there's others who are saying, no, we're not accepting that you're taking this off the ballot. Meanwhile, um, this year, in 2023, America, as the great power in the world, continued to decline. China recently informed President Biden that they're going to take Taiwan. That could be a third world war. They said, we're going to do it. Without any apparent fear of American reaction, it doesn't, the world, many, many factions don't fear America as they did, nor the pirates in the, in the Red Sea. America's decline is a dangerous thing for the world order. And when you take America out, or what it's been, your likelihood of war or the likelihood of what you read about in the end time prophecy, that is where it goes. But even if America didn't decline the way America's going, it won't even matter if it turns. But now I want to focus on three major things as I bring this home. The first happened less than three months ago. On the morning after a Friday night service here, when I spoke about the 50-year mystery, which I put in the Josiah Manifesto, and on that night it was the 50-year anniversary of a massive ground attack invasion of Israel had not happened for 50 years. That morning it happened. Hamas terrorists from the Gaza Strip invaded the land of Israel. 
killed 1,200 Israelis, took over 200 hostages, committed atrocity after, I don't know if you read about what they did, but it's, it's, it's Nazi. I mean, what they did to the babies, to the children, to the pregnant mothers, what they did to the families, what they did. So this past year contained the worst day in Jewish history since Adolf Hitler. This 2023. What did it reveal? And this is probably the major story of the year. What does it reveal? The Bible is true. Here we are in the third decade of the 21st century and Israel is still here, number one. The Bible said it would be. Never going to disappear. Number two, here we are in modern times and the world is still focused on this tiny little nation the size of New Jersey. That's a sign of what God said was going to happen in the end days. That's what it said. What happened on October 7th is a sign of the truth of God's Word. There is a dark force that opposes the existence of the nation of Israel. What happened wasn't a matter of politics. What happened was demonic. What happened was satanic. Because that's what was behind it. It wasn't even rational. And that brings us to the next thing. Israel responded with a campaign to eradicate Hamas. And the world condemned it. When Russia invaded the Ukraine for no apparent reason, unprovoked, no justification, it just invaded another nation. Harvard was silent. The colleges of America, there wasn't any great protest. Penn State, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, where, where were they? There wasn't any great protest when Russia just invaded. Where was BLM and all the others that have now condemned Israel for responding to what was done to it. But Israel seeks to respond by eliminating the evil that brutally killed and tortured its citizens. Any nation would do that. America would do that. And Harvard rages against, not Hamas, Israel. And all the wokeness, all the things who rage against the slightest insult. If you look at me the wrong way, it's a microaggression. If you misgender me, microaggression. That's microaggression. But when a macroaggression comes, when they brutal murder of innocent men, women, and children, they're suddenly silent. They have nothing to say. They will not condemn it. In fact, they'll be for it. Where was Hollywood that shouts out every woke issue, that turns the Oscars into a political rally? Where were they? What did they have to say about this? Virtually nothing. The only ones who really talked were Jewish, <laughs> Jewish actors or some, just a few. Pretty not much nothing. What about the Me Too movement? All the Israeli women who were raped and stabbed to death while being raped and mutilated, the Me Too movement said nothing, didn't care one bit. They had nothing to say. Where was the UN? They have a commission on women. They didn't say a thing about this. They didn't care until they were forced to make a statement because they didn't even want to do it. BLM, and listen, this, you know, actually celebrated the terrorists, posting images of the paragliders coming in, Hamas coming in to, with machine guns to murder Israeli families. They celebrated it. Where was, where was the General Assembly of the UN? Nowhere. The Secretary, nowhere. What they did is, you know what they did? They sought to pass a resolution condemning Israel, not Hamas. Talk about evil and sickness. Nations of the world kill tens of thousands and some hundreds of thousands of their own people, like North Korea, like Syria, like many others, Sudan. And the UN says nothing about it. No condemnation. Nothing. The elite universities, nothing. But Israel seeks to defend itself from the horror that came on it, as we all would, and the world condemns it. Something doesn't make sense. Something doesn't add up. What the media will rarely mention is the fact that Israel pulled out of the Gaza Strip almost 20 years ago, left Gaza to Gaza, said, hope there be peace. The Gazans elected Hamas to lead them, which is a terrorist group. Israel had six crossing stations from, from Gaza to enter in Israel and come back, daily employed 20,000 people from Gaza to make a living and go back. Hamas attacked all the crossings. So they had to close it down till there were two left. 
because Hamas attacked it. What the media doesn't tell you is Egypt also blocks Gaza because they see it as dangerous. They want nothing to do with it. But nobody protests Egypt. Hundreds of millions of dollars poured into Gaza to help Gaza. Hamas spent fortunes of that money not to help Gaza, but to get weapons and missiles to fire into Israel. To build hundreds of miles of tunnels to conduct terrorism underground against Israel. They found in the shelters of Hamas a copy of Mein Kampf, Hitler's autobiography. It's the same spirit. What they did was the most similar to what the Nazis did when they used to go house to house and look for Jewish people. It's the evil that comes from beyond this world. The evil comes from the evil one. The Bible says it. I spoke about this on Friday, the dragon. There is an evil one. We know him as Satan. And his aim is to destroy the purposes of God and the works of God. God says Israel is where it's all going to happen. So of course he wants to destroy Israel because God had created Israel. God called it to exist and God said it, said, you're a witness that I exist. So the enemy says, I want to destroy that, that people. He's been trying for 4,000 years. What we saw was just the last act. But when it's been part of a war that's been going on. So what we saw, instead of the fact that instead of from the world would come sympathy, overwhelmingly the world erupted in hatred and rage against Israel. There were demonstrations all over the world with Nazi swastikas, calls for gassing the Jews. From the Arab world to Europe to the United States. It was, and it was as if like demons like sharks get excited over Jewish blood. Exactly right. It's satanic sickness. Yep. It's been around for ancient times. There's hardly been a generation on earth that has not seen it in one form or another. Some of you are old enough to remember World War II and the Holocaust. Well, now this happened. In fact, in fact, you know, what happens is it just mutates. It takes on a new name, but it's the same sickness from the enemy. From ancient paganism to Adolf Hitler to Hamas. There were actually Holocaust survivors. They survived Hitler as children. They were taken by Hamas as hostages. Old people. That it erupted this year in such a dramatic way should not surprise us. It's never dead. It's only under the surface, waiting for the moment. And make no mistake, it's deadly. Its aim, if given the chance, is not to make noise or have a demonstration. This spirit, I'm not talking about the people, but I'm talking about the spirit that's moving them. The spirit means to in annihilate the Jewish people. That's it. That's not a, not a little, not an opinion. That's what happens. That's where you get Auschwitz. That's actually what happens. And wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Well, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says in the last days all nations will come against Israel. How could that happen? Why would all the world come against this little tiny nation? The only democracy there grows vegetables. Makes no sense. But it's not natural. It's what the Bible says. And what we've seen this year was not natural, and you can see it leading up to the day of the Bible says that, by the way, will happen and Messiah will come. Messiah's coming, you know, according to the Bible, the prophecy that said Israel will be back, and it is, will happen on a day when Israel's back and all the nations of the world will come against it, then he will come. Well, you can see what happened this year bears it all out. Why would they come against this little thing? Why? Unless they were in a rage that made no sense. So this, as this year comes to an end, as this year comes to an end, it tells you that the Bible is true. God is true. The Word of God is true. The enemy is real. God is stronger. But it's all coming to pass and we are in that day. And you can know it. The world doesn't know it. The media doesn't know it. But you know it. But it wasn't the only thing that came true that the Bible said would come true. I began by speaking about a great apostasy, the Bible says. Less than two weeks ago, to the end of the year, something else happened of seismic importance. It was only two weeks ago that the Pope of the Catholic Church, after 2,000 years of recognizing a sin as a sin, the Catholic Church was now going to give its blessing to same-sex couples, homosexual unions, Lesbian unions. Now listen, we love all people. Such were some of you. We're all in the same boat. But we also call 
truth, truth, and sin, sin, and righteousness, righteousness. Something that could barely be imagined just a few years ago that this would happen to the Catholic Church, the Pope. Catholic priests are going to give their blessing to what the Bible says. Now just two years before the Vatican came, Vatican came out with a statement saying they could not do this because, this is what they wrote, God cannot bless sin. Well apparently they changed that God can bless sin or of course God cannot but they can. Now they claimed, and you may be from a Catholic background watching or here, it has nothing to do, listen, we're here for God. It doesn't matter, forget about labels. In heaven there's not going to be a Catholic section or a Protestant section or a Jewish section or a Hindu section. It's just about you and God. It's all that matters in the end. They claim that nothing changed. Well, said, well, you didn't change anything. Well, the fact is when you have a document, when you need a document of 5,000 words to say that nothing's really changed, you know something big has changed. The Pope is doing something nobody dreamed of doing. Any more than a church blessing in church of a couple involved in incest. Why did he do it? He was simply following the world. It's the end time world. It's an apostate world. The Pope following the apostasy though was a big deal. When the Democratic Party turned, used to be for marriage as a man and woman, everybody. Change that, it was one thing. When Hollywood turned, it was one thing. Corporate world, one thing. Disney, one thing. Boy Scouts, one thing. But for the Catholic Church, it's a whole nother thing. It means that the floodgates of the culture are totally open. You see, the Catholic Church is strongly linked to Western civilization. When biblical morality prevailed over pagan morality, what became the Catholic Church was part of that. It's now reversing that before our eyes. There are two ways the world will seek to end the faith, will try to end the faith. One is by persecuting the true followers of Messiah. The other is by corrupting those who bear the name. Mark my words, unless another should arise in the place of this pope who has a different, who will over, undo that, this is only the first step. It will come to that church not only to bless, not only to bless two people together, but to bless civil unit, to perform marriage. And then it will celebrate it with rainbow flags and will persecute anybody who refuses it. Now there will be people who come out, of course. In the book of Revelation it speaks of an end time worship of the Antichrist. A false worship implies a false church. You have an Antichrist, you have a false church. We may have just seen one of the most important steps to the coming of that church. The Catholic Church, by the way, didn't lead this. The Protestant Church did. The mainstream old school Protestant churches, they embraced this before, long before. And just within a day or two of the Pope doing this, the Anglican Church just before it did the same thing. Church of England did the same thing. And just a few days ago, the Methodist Church of the United Kingdom declared, this just came out, they declared that Jesus is Lord. No, 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 no. They declared that words like husband and wife are now offensive and have to be repented of. So too are sons and daughters. You're not, they don't want their ministers using those, those curse words. Mother and father, out. Instead of mother and father, they said, you're now to say carer or caregiver. So I guess now the woman of Revelation who rides the beast is to be called Babylon, the caregiver of harlots. <laughs> it's as if the, the denominations are in competition to see which one could be the most apostate. You think your denomination is apostate? Look what we're doing. We don't even remember what we're apostatizing from. We're so apostatizing that we're apostatizing from apostasy. We're repenting and we don't even know it. It's amazing that they can wear the name Christian. I'm sorry, you know, it's deceptive advertising. Call yourself pagan and get it over with. This end time false church will most likely be a body of many denominations joined together in rebellion against God. And there won't be then a division between Catholic and Protestant and Orthodox or anything else. Most likely then, or charismatic versus not, or it will most likely be a true church and a false one. True believers and false. That's it. I came to the Lord because I picked up a book years ago about biblical end time prophecy. And for years it was hard to see exactly how it would happen. It's not hard to see anymore. It's happening. That's the encouragement. God already said it. What's happening? Don't be, don't be alarmed. There's nothing wrong with your television set. God said it. It's happening. The time is late. 
So it is written. So then as we approach 2024 in about 35 minutes, be careful how you walk. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Make the most of your time because the days are evil. Redeem the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The time is late. No matter what age you live in, we got to make the most of your time. No matter what, we gotta, you gotta make a, your days on earth are numbered, so no matter when you live, you gotta, you got to apply this. But there, and that there's less of the time left, less days than there ever were in your life before. There are less days than there ever were today. But on top of it, the time is late because we live in the latter days. The days are evil. Everything you do for God means more. Everything you, every stand you take for God means more. Is worth much more than when you lived in a quote Christian culture. Everything you do is going to be powerful. If you stand for God, going to be more powerful. Worth more. The famous theologian Jonathan Edwards, how many people have heard of Jonathan Edwards? Made a resolution as a young man. It included this. He said, resolved never to lose one moment of time, but to improve it in the most profitable way I possibly can. Resolved to live with all my might will I do live. Resolved never to do anything which I should be afraid to do if it was the last hour of my life. Think about that. He prayed, Lord, stamp eternity on my eyes. See everything in view of eternity. Then there was the evangelist John Wesley. You've heard of him too, right? The Methodist church came out of him. He would, he would, he would, if he saw what was happening as in the Methodist church in England, he would reject that right away. Say, what is this? It has nothing to do with me. But John Wesley made his rule of conduct this. Listen. Do all the good you can by all the means you can. In all the ways you can. In all the places you can. At all the times you can. To all the people you can. As long as you ever can. We live in dramatic times. We live in radical times. We have to live radically for God in this year to come. Israel is the physical nation of God. The true people of Messiah are the spiritual nation of God. The spiritual Israel, a physical Israel. This year, both were attacked. Both are under attack. I said to people when they said, when this thing happened in Gaza, I said, you know what? If it's attacking Israel, it's going to attack, this same force is going to attack God's people. In Israel, the walls of defense were broken and the enemy poured into the land. What the Pope just did What's been happening in our culture every day, but what the Pope just did was another wall that was broken. It's part of an attack, not from him. He doesn't know what he's doing. An attack from the enemy. As the physical attack brought physical destruction, death, so the spiritual attack is to bring the same thing, spiritual death. And in this we have to take, as we close this, we have to take a lesson from the Israelis. They know they have an enemy, and they know they have to stand against that enemy. They know they can't depend on the world anymore. They learned that after World War II. They learned they have to not care what the world thinks. They know that if they are to live and survive, they've got to fight. And I told you that before Israel, most Jewish people didn't fight. They weren't allowed to join armies for a long time. But when they got back to Israel, they said, if we don't fight, we're dead. So all of a sudden, they put on uniforms, got some weapons together, and they learned how to fight. I've said this before, I believe this year will be a dramatic one with warfare. And you who are born again are born again spiritual Israelites. You are also spiritual Israelis. Let me give you a spoiler alert. In the Bible, the word Israelite is Israeli. Same word. The Bible says you are spiritual Israelites. You're a spiritual Israeli. And so you must fight. This year you must fight the good fight. That means you don't let the enemy have his way anymore. That means you don't let the enemy intimidate you, ensnare you, hinder you, entangle you anymore. That means you don't care what the, what the world says or what the polls say or what the media says. It doesn't matter. They don't have God. They need God. You have God. You are not following that. You're to be leading that. Don't let the enemy terrorize you this year. Don't let him paralyze you. Don't let him discourage you. Don't let him compromise you. Don't let him make you afraid. Don't let him defile you. Fight the enemy. Fight the good fight. 
Drive him out of your land. What Israel has to do physically. Drive him out of your inheritance. Drive him out of your walk. Drive him out of your house. Drive him out of your calling. Drive him out of your thought life. Drive him out of your attitudes. Drive him out of your habits. Drive him off the land. Take back what is yours. This year, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of righteousness. Fight for your calling. Fight for your ministry. Fight for your peace. Fight for your blessing. Fight for your family. Fight for your victory. Fight the good fight. This year be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. This year be strong and of good courage. And everywhere the soles of your feet shall tread, if you walk, it shall be given to you. Fight the good fight. Fight the good war in 2024. Happy New Year. Amen. Let's rise, everybody. Let's rise, everybody. Okay, we've got 27 minutes until 2024 comes. Okay? So let's just, let's come before the Lord right now. We're going to enter. The, I need all the worshipers. Where are the worshipers when you need them? <laughs> we need to worship. We need to enter worshiping. Come on, worshipers. All right. But let's come into prayer right now. And before we do anything else, let's, let's just come right into prayer. Let's just right now take the word. And I would say everybody at home, same thing. Let's come before him. Father, we praise you right now, and we bless you. And Lord, we want victory this year. We want victory, Father. We want to overcome this year. Lord, we want to go higher. We want to have victories that we have not had before. We want to, Lord, not accept the enemy or his ways in our lives. We want to overcome and become the person you've called us to be. We praise you now, Lord. We praise you, Father. Stay in prayer right now. We're going to pray specifically. We're going to lift up everything in the time we have. But before we do that, right now, if you are hearing my voice, whether you're here or you're, you're watching online, if you're not sure that you're born again, you're not sure that you're saved, you're not sure you have eternal life, you're not sure you're right with God. If I said, is your life right with God? Maybe you've known God, but you've kind of gotten away from His will. You have to say, no, not really. Well, listen. Jesus said, you must be born again. Yeshua, he said, Messiah said, you must be born again. Doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, whatever you are. You need to be born again. It's not about religion. It's about you and Him. He said, unless you're born again, you cannot enter heaven. You can't do that. So listen, nobody knows how long they have. So you don't want to say, hey, I'll get right with God another time. You may not have another time. you got a heartbeat. That can stop tomorrow. You may not have tomorrow. And even if you have tomorrow, you may not be open tomorrow, but you're open now. There's only two roads. It's either heaven or hell. If you're not born again, you're on the wrong road. That's what the Bible says. And, but yet, the Lord loves you. Gave His life for you. Gave, gave Messiah for you. Jesus, that's what He's all about. He died for your sins. He rose from death for you. If you were the only one on earth, He would have done it. And that here we are in approaching 2024 and He's still the same. Everything changes but Him. And He's calling you. And it, right now, He said, you must be born again. If you're not sure you are, we're going to do it together. I'm going to help you. I don't want you going into this new year without being right with God. So right now with our eyes closed, we're going to pray a simple prayer. The simple prayer is to say yes to God. If you're not born again, that's the first thing. You need to get in. If you're not sure you're saved, you need to get in. If maybe you've known God, you've kind of fallen away, you need to get back, you need to get back. Maybe you've been okay, but God's calling you to higher ground. We're going to pray a simple prayer that's simply saying yes to God's call and will on your life. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, you shall be saved. So I'm going to lead in a very simple prayer to say yes to God. And wherever you're at, just, ju if that's you, just pray the prayer. Say the words and mean it in your heart. The Bible says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. You can say the words in a whisper. In fact, if you're here, I want you to say it in a whisper because I don't want you to be self-conscious. They won't hear you. You won't hear them because they're going to be praying. We're going to be praying in a whisper to God. And we're simply going to pray, yes, Lord. Yes to your call. Yes to your love. Yes to your plan for my life. Yes to the higher ground. Yes, Lord. 
And Lord, I'm putting everything else away. I'm turning away from sin. I'm turning to you. I'm turning to you. With all my heart this year. I'm leaving the old in 2023. I'm not taking it with me. I'm putting it away right now. Whatever's not of you in my life, I'm putting it away and I'm following you. So we're going to pray together that simple prayer. And Lord, come in and fill up every part of my life with you and your power. We're going to pray together. Now listen, don't worry anybody. I'm not going to call anybody up or anything. This is between you and God right now. This is just now. But right now, everyone, this is, this is you and also everybody at home, Let's pray together right now. Just repeat after me these words. It's the most important thing. The Lord is saying, now's your moment. Don't lose it. Don't miss it. Don't let it pass you by. You may not have that again. God wants you to have a victorious 2024. Here's how it begins. Just repeat after me these simple words. And do it in a whisper, but mean it to God. Let's pray. Just repeat these words. Lord God, I come to you now. And I say yes to your call. Yes to your love. Yes to your will and plan for my life. Your purpose. Your highest call. I say yes. I'm going to follow you with all my heart. I turn away from the old. I turn away from my sins. I'm leaving them here in 2023. I'm entering 2024 without them. Lord, cleanse me wash me, forgive me, make me new from all these things for I come to you now to rise higher and to follow you. Lord, I receive your love. I receive your presence into every part of my life. Your cleansing, your spirit, your power, your peace into every part of my life. Mind, body, soul, and spirit. And I'm going to follow you as never before this year. I'm going to rise to the call and fight the good fight. Lord, thank you for loving me, giving your life, dying for my sins, rising so I could have eternal life. Be with me always as I follow you as your disciple in 2024 and all the days to come. I praise you. I love you. I thank you, Lord. And I'm going full blast as your disciple. And I thank you in the name above every name. The name of my Redeemer, the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. In his name. And I say, Amen. Amen. Everybody, please keep your eyes closed. As I said, I'm not going to call anybody up, so don't worry about anything. But I want you to do one thing. We're going to do it together. The Bible says, if you, conf if, you says, if you confess me on earth before men, the Lord says, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. If you don't, I can't. So you want to seal this. You want to be strong in this year to come. So right now we're going to do something very simple. You want to, the breakthrough comes when you connect that, those words. It can't just be words, that prayer, with action. We're going to do a very easy, simple, fast action together. And it's before the Lord. But this is real important. And that's it. After that, that's it. We're going to now, then we're going to enter into the new year. So right now, and at home, you do it. Be strong and do, what, do whatever you need to do here. Everybody here who prayed the prayer with me, we prayed together. You prayed to Jesus right now. Lift up your hands for Jesus. Slip up your hands for Jesus right now. God bless you all. 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 There's many of you. I don't know. I guess say I'm not going to call you up. Everybody does it. <laughs> Father, have your way with each one who raised their hand. Lord, have your way. And at home, if you raised your hand, have your way, Lord, with each one now. For victory this year, breakthrough this year, all your blessings this year. In the name above every name, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. All right, listen, everybody. You prayed that prayer, and maybe you guys at home as well. Listen, one thing you want to do is every day take time to get into speaking to God, number one. Number two, get a Bible if you don't have one and just get into the Word, a Word every day. Take it. And number three, just do the Word. Just go where He leads you. Number four, 
Find a place. If you're not in the area, find wherever you are where they love the Lord. You guys who are here, we're going to enter in the New Year's and we're going to be rejoicing. But remember something. If you did it for the first time, look over there where it says prayer. Before you leave today, go in there and let's have, just have the lights on there and have maybe at least somebody there or a few people. There'll be some ministers or at least a person there. There's some gifts for you. There's a Bible if you don't have one. There's a book on how to be, live successfully for God and a CD on how, what to do now. It's going to give you victory for your life. That's all there, okay? If you want to pray with anybody, they'll do that. So just stay a few, at least a few minutes into the new year after we finish, all right? All right, everybody else, let's get ready. Let's pray. Let's come into God's presence. You at home, we're, we're, entering the, the, we're entering the new year with God and His Spirit and presence. That's the best way to do it. Let's do it. Father, we praise You tonight. We praise You on December 31st, 2023, in the last 17 minutes of this year. We th First of all, we thank You that You have taken care of us this year. We thank You, Father, for every blessing we've had. Every blessing, Lord, we can never thank you. We don't even know half of them. We only know what we know is more than enough, but you, you bless us more than we even know. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings we know and all the blessings we don't know. Thank you, Lord, for every answered prayer. Thank you, Lord, for every healing. If, you, if we're healed from whatever we were sick and we're healed, we thank you for it. Thank you for every heartbeat. You kept our hearts beating this year. You kept our, our lungs breathing this year. You gave us time. We thank you for the time on earth. We thank you for the time in heaven to come, but we thank you for the time on earth. Lord God, we praise you for all the blessings we have. While I'm praying, don't just be dependent on me talking. You, lift, you talk to God. Thank Him for whatever you need to thank Him for. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for that. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our congregation. We thank you for our calling. We thank you for all the blessings. All the blessings. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for taking us out of where we were. That we're not there anymore. We're not in heaven yet, but we're out of Egypt. And we thank you for that. We're in your, your, in your presence. We thank you for being in our lives, Lord. We thank you that you will have never left us this year. You didn't forsake us in 23. You didn't leave us for one moment. And we praise you for that, Lord. Thank you for all the encouragements you gave us through your word, through hearing it. Words or opening the Bible and it, it just jumped out and spoke to us. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for using others to help us and bless us and encourage us. Thank you for keeping us from danger. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. We praise you, Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, it says. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Father, we praise you. And Lord, we ask now that the year to come be greater. Lord, make us strong. Anoint us for greater things. Lord, anoint us. Lord, I, I've said I believe this is going to be a dramatic year and there's going to be warfare. But Lord, we are not afraid of warfare because we know the one we have. We know what side we're on, and that's the winning side. We know that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So, Lord, we pray for each other right now. We pray for our brothers and sisters here and those who are watching and those in the body. We pray strengthen your people. Strengthen whatever they're going to be dealing with, whatever attack, make them strong, make them victorious, that the enemy flees when they stand for you. Lord, that, that depression flees, that fear flees. Lord, that anger flees, bitterness flees, lack of peace flees, whatever's not of you, lust flees, whatever that sin flees, Lord. We pray for each other. Lord, we pray. We don't judge. We're not here to judge each other. We uphold your truth, but we're here to pray for each other. And we pray for the body, Lord. All in America and across the world, we pray in 2024 for the persecuted believers across the world, Lord. Those that are brothers and sisters in China, bless them this year. In, in Nigeria, in, in, in Africa, in Asia, in, in North Korea, in Pakistan, in India, in across the world, Lord, in Russia, in the West, Lord. Strengthen our brothers and sisters in Latin America. Strengthen them. We pray for all our brothers and sisters. And we pray for revival, Lord. Let there be revival in America. 
Let there be revival, Lord, in Washington. Have your way with the election, Lord. Have your way with this next election. Let it be so. Your purposes be done, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in California and New York, the coast. Have your way with the coast. Have your way with the heartland, Lord. We pray for the heartland. We pray for the youth. We pray for the children. Have your way, Lord. We pray for every evangelist, everyone who will spread your word to be strengthened supernaturally this year and make us those people who spread your gospel this year. We don't hold it back. We spread it. Anoint us, Lord. Father, we praise you. And we ask your blessing, Father, on each of our lives, Lord. Give us victory over whatever we need victory for. Maybe we didn't have victory in that area before. We want victory this year. We claim it. Lord, we pray, Father, this year, have us rise higher to the calling you gave us. That we become the person you called us to be this year. In 2024, we ask for more in 24. Lord, we praise you. Lord, give us breakthrough this year. We pray for it. Lord, we pray for revival and a harvest, a great harvest to come. Use us right here in Beth Israel for your purposes for this day and age. Lord, make us strong and mighty, Father, that one would put, Lord, a thousand to flight. And two would put 10,000 to flight. Make us powerful, Lord, each of us, that the least one would be a clan, the greatest one be a nation, Lord. Make, Lord, enlarge our tents this year, personally and as a ministry, as a people. Enlarge our tents. Expand to the right and the left. We praise you and bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you not only for what has been, we thank you for what will be. We thank you in advance for answering our prayers in 24. Lord, we thank you in advance for all the blessings you're going to give, for all the grace you're going to give, for all the, the shepherding you're going to do for us, even keeping us out of trouble. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for being our shepherd who leads us who guides us, who corrects us, who feeds us, who protects us from the wolf. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for being our shepherd in 2024. We bless you, Lord. We declare here on 2024 that after over 2,000 years, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is no name like your name, Lord. They can't destroy it. They can't get it out. For it always comes back. You are, you are the one. You are Yeshua, Jesus. The name above all names. We thank you for that name, Lord. We thank you that we are named by that name. That we stand in that name. We, we were saved in that name. And we will, we will prevail in that name. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. We are more than conquerors in 2024. And we, we say, Lord, we're, whatever, we, whatever we need to do, Lord, we put you first right now. We want to go all out, Lord. We want to go all out. Lord, anoint us by your Spirit for 2024. We praise you. Stay in the Spirit right now. Nine minutes until 2024. We praise you right now, Lord, and thank you and love you and bless you in every way. Lord, we want to just give you praise. We want to enter praising you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for you. Lord, we lift up everything in our lives. Bless our families. Bless the works of our hands. Bless what comes out of our mouth. Help our, Lord, that what we speak be holy. And what we see with our eyes, anoint our eyes that in 2024, that what we look at is holy. Anoint our feet that we walk in your will. Give us victory. Give us favor. Give us new open doors. 
to do your will and to fulfill the calling. We praise you, Lord. We bless you. We lift you up, Lord. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua, the Anointed One. Kochav, Kochev, Yishai. The star, the star. Kochev, Yaakov, the star of Jacob. Ari Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Melech Malchim, the King of all kings. Haset Elohim, the Lamb of God. Roshep Pinav, the cornerstone. Sar Chaim, the Prince of Life. El Gibor, the mighty God. Pele, the wonder. Mashiach, the anointed one, the Messiah. We praise you, Lord. Tikvat Olam, the hope of the world, the hope of Israel. Or HaOlam, the light of the world. Uchvod Yisrael, the glory of Israel. Emmanuel, God who will be with us every moment of 2024. We exalt you, Lord. We behold you on your throne. You are above and beyond. You are timeless. You're above everything, Lord, and we behold you tonight. Everything passes but you. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. If you have a shofar, everybody stay in prayer. You've got a shofar. you got a trumpet. Come on up. If you have a shofar at home, you can get it ready. You guys who have shofars, come on up. We bless you, Lord. We're gonna usher it. We're gonna usher it in as they, as God did in the Bible. Just bring your shofars up. Yeah, yeah. Come on up. And security, you can let them up. Yeah. You can, we, okay. I'll be blown away. Yeah. 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 Back. Yeah. Yeah. With the shofars. Yeah. Just go. All the shofars there. Yeah. 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 Come on up. Oh, we think we have a lot of shofars. Is that a sign? The sign of God's power. Sign of war, sign of jubilee, sign of release, sign of blessing, sign of breakthrough. We have our brother Mazen, who is of Arab descent, who who's, loves Israel, is going to sound the shofar as well. If, if anybody looks biblical, it's this guy right here. Well, the shofar. All right, let's get ready. We got five minutes. Let's get ready. Father, we praise you. We're going we're to come in rejoicing. We're going to come in praising. So, Lord, we just lift up everything, Lord, everything that has been, and we, we bless you. And everything that is, we bless you. And we look forward to great and mighty things we know not of. The Lord says, call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not of. Lord, we want great and mighty things that we know not of. And we bless you for that, Lord. We praise you tonight. Lord, we want this to be a year of greater, greater things. And if we, if we need to fight, which we will, we thank you for the fight because that's the only way we can be victorious if we fight. Only way to be an overcomer, victorious. Lord, we embrace it. You are greater. You are awesome. You are on the throne. We behold you and we thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask also my family, could you come up? Come on up with me. Join me. I want you to say, we've done this on Passover, but I want to do it tonight. And that is when you hear the word, praise the Lord, I want you to say, hallelujah. hallelujah. You want to shout it though. Okay, ready? Because that's what it is in Hebrew. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Him in His sanctuary. Hallelujah. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. Praise Him for His greatness. Hallelujah. Praise Him for His mighty works. Hallelujah. Praise Him with trumpet, but don't, guys. Praise Him with trumpet. Hallelujah. Praise Him with harp. Hallelujah. Praise Him with timbrel. Hallelujah. Praise Him with strings. Hallelujah. Praise Him with pipes. Hallelujah. Praise Him with cymbals. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. We praise you, Lord. <laughs> I just opened up the Bible. You know what it opened up to? Put the trumpet to your mouth. Father, we praise you and thank you and we can't wait because we don't know all that the future holds, but we know the one who holds the future and that is you. And you are our daddy and you hold the future. So we embrace it. We embrace all that is to come. There's two. I believe I have another son. I thought I had another son. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. <laughs> That's Mishael. Hi, buddy. Come on. And that's my wife, Renata. And that's Eliel. And that's Diel. Two minutes and 20 seconds. Are we ready? Okay. Get ready. At the stroke, at the stroke, that's when you do. Don't do it before. Okay. All right. And then you'll be able to say Happy New Year and all that. And then we're going to go into some praise. Amen. Because that's the way to go into it, with praise and blessing. Okay, we got two minutes to go. I believe at one minute the count, you'll see the countdown. Elmar, you ready for that? Elmar, you ready at one minute to put up the countdown? All right, the countdown will be up there in one minute. People are right now freezing in Times Square to watch a ball. We've got the Lord. It's so much better. I mean, some of them may, but... Father, we praise you. 30 seconds to the one minute countdown. Be ready. Fifteen seconds, just about, and we'll begin the countdown. We praise you, Lord, and thank you and bless you. And I just opened up to I, that day I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. In that day I will pour out my spirit. And it's coming. Everybody at home, take part in it. Let's get ready. You're seeing it come. <laughs> 2024. More in 2024. Win the war in 2024. I'll keep going if I can think of more think of more in 2024. 35 coming. When we get to, we get to 20, let's count down together. Ready, it's coming. And the Lord is there. What happened to, what happened to the music? Keep going, guys. What are you doing? Okay, ready. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.